In this tutorial, we're going to talk about offset paths and how to use the blending tool. Let me start with the offset path. I'm going to use my ellipse tool um, to draw a circle. I'm going to draw my circle holding down the Alt and the Shift keys because that will allow me to draw a circle from the center, just like that. And now I want to make the circle red. So I want to swap the stroke with the fill by hovering over this little swap fill and stroke little button. Okay, now with the circle selected, I can go to Object, Path, and then Offset Path. What this does is it basically offsets my path for me. So it will create a bigger or a smaller circle around my circle or inside my circle. So currently it says this uh, value, which seems to be a default or a random value of 0 0.1389 inches. Uh, that's fine, I can keep it, I can change it to points, whatever. For this purpose, let me just keep it as it is and hit OK. OK, uh, if you were focusing, you would see that a bigger circle was created. And if I go to preview mode uh, or the outline mode by hitting Command Y, I will see um, that additional circle right around my circle being created, right? Um, let me go back to normal view. This is useful in cases where you want to, for example, make a frame around your image and uh, you don't want to draw a, a circle that's random, that has a random size. You want it exactly a certain amount bigger than your existing circle. So that's when you use an offset path. Obviously, you can apply the same effect to rectangles or any shape you wish. So for this purpose, um, I was using a circle. And now I want to, again, swap the fill with the stroke um, so that you see that I have a frame around my circle. And it's endless what you can do with this. You can maybe uh, take this uh, stroked circle, uh, use one of the brushes that Illustrator offers, apply a brush effect, and so forth. Let's do the same thing with a rectangle now, just so that you see um, that it works on all sorts of elements. So this is my rectangle. I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path, and then uh, maybe add a bigger value this time. Or actually, let's add a negative value so that you see what happens. 0 0.2 in this case, minus 0 0.2. Hit OK, and a smaller rectangle, as you can see, will be created inside of that rectangle for me. So what I can do is perhaps, uh, again, swap the colors, uh, use a, a white um, um, stroke instead, and and so forth. So it depends on what you you're trying to do. You will end up having a, a good um, frame frame like um, style to your work. With regards to uh, using the blend tool, this is a very powerful tool, and uh, let me show you what it can do. I'm going to take this um, square, a rectangle tool, and just draw a random square on the artboard. It currently has a white stroke, which I don't want. I want it to change to, um, let's say, this nice turquoise blue right here. Then I want to uh, hold the Alt key. Uh, remember that the Alt key will allow you to copy an element. So holding the Alt key, I want to drag this element to make a copy of it. Now my hand is moving, as you can see. If I want it located on the same horizontal line as the existing square, I just hold down the Shift key, which I just did, and release. OK, now I want to color this other blue, uh, this other square, excuse me, a different kind of blue, like this um, purplish blue. What the blending tool does is it blends the colors um, you know, from blue to darker blue or any colors you choose, it's going to create a gradient of colors from the first to the next one. So that's a great effect. Let me select, let me select both and then go to the blending tool whose um, obviously shortcut is W. So let me hit W. And what I need to do now is hover over the first square and click once in the center and then hover over the second square and hit once, holding down the Alt key. 
Having done that, this window opens and it asks me if I want a smooth color or specified steps or a specified dis distance. For this ex exercise, I want to use specified steps. So select that and then you specify the number of steps you want. So for this case, since the squares are too close to one another, let me say four, which means I will have four steps between the two existing squares resulting in six steps. Hit OK and you'll get a nice gradient of blues from the turquoise to the purple. How is this useful? Um, let's say you're working on some uh, layout that has certain colors and then you want to apply uh, variations of that color or, or perhaps you're not very strong at uh, choosing colors yet um, and you wish to use different colors. This is a great way because it um, it's for sure will provide you with colors that go one with one another. So in this case, there's no doubt that one of these blues is going to work with any of the other blues within a composition or a logo. Now, um, if I go to the outline mode by again going to Command Y, what you see is only the four, um, the, the two uh, squares that we initially drew with a line in between, which means there's a blending mode happening there. Um, if you wish to have individual squares for each of those uh, four other squares that resulted with the blending tool, what you need to do is select the whole thing by hitting Command A, go to Object, um, and expand and then hit OK where it says expand. This will provide us with four um, squares in between and the two original squares that we had initially drawn. So, so now if I go to my outline mode I have six squares. Um, what I can do with these colors is Perhaps I can empty my swatches panel. So let me select this red. I always like to, to keep the white and the black, but throw out all other colors. Um, so select the red and then the last uh, purple and then throw all the colors in the trash. And what you can do is uh, position these colors nicely in your swatches and then refer to them while working on some artboard, uh, so on something in your artboard. So um, let me take this first blue and I realize that um, I'm not able to take the first blue square because they're all grouped. To ungroup them, if you remember from the previous tutorial, we hit Command Shift G. So now they are ungrouped. Okay, I'm going to select the first square and when I do, the color shows in the toolbox. And then I can take the color, drag it into my swatches, and there it goes. Select the second one, same thing. The third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and finally the sixth one. Okay, so I have now my nice gradient of colors in the swatches panel. I can get rid of these squares. And then whatever I have, maybe I have um, a logo uh, or something happening uh, that I need to use these colors with. Let's say um, I have a word here that says hello and maybe it's made up of this thick font. Um, I will uh, scale it up and then create outlines of it. All of these steps you know how to do so I'm not saying exactly what I'm doing but just being quick for the purpose of showing you how I can apply the color on each of those letters. Um, what I did is I created outline and then I ungrouped uh, the word and now I'm able to click on each letter individually. So perhaps I want to color the H this turquoise, the E the next color, the L the next blue, the third one, uh, the second L the fourth blue, the O, this um, navy blue, and so forth. So you see it's a gradient of um, turquoise blue to navy blue. It's a very nice effect, always useful in all sorts of uh, things. 
Another thing we can do with the blending tool is, let's say I have this uh, shape using the brush tool, for example, or, la or later on the pen tool, which we'll cover in another tutorial. Let's say I have this uh, line, and then uh, perhaps I have another line with a different color somewhere here, a, a random shape. What I can do is also create a, a certain you know, blend between these two. Let me take this turquoise blue and put the stroke down to, let's say, 0 0.005 inches. So it becomes a thin stroke. Let me select both elements, go to the Blend tool, and same thing. Click once this time. Since this element doesn't have a center necessarily, I can choose one of the vector points. So click there once and then select any of the vector points from the second element, for example this one, hit the Alt key and then click, and this window opens. Um, when it does, I can specify my steps, perhaps in this case I want like 12 steps, and then hit OK, and you'll see this nice beautiful result that you can really manipulate. If you remember, we mentioned using the direct selection tool, when you hover over the one of these strokes, which is what I'm going to do now, the black square appears and it means that you can actually select that line and do something with it. So in this case, I want to perhaps um, click outside and drag to select this particular vector point, scale it outwards, perhaps take this tangent handle, scale it out, do change the path, you know, design it otherwise. It's really endless what you can do, but this is a great uh, initial practice to working with the blend tool and the offset paths.